It's another great report uh, by David Sirota of the International Business Times on how big money in politics led to a disaster in Texas who is already currently dealing with the disaster that is Hurricane Harvey. Now, uh, this has to do with corporate lobbying and deregulating industry and how uh, and what kind of impact it has in a heavily flooded area. Now, according to federal records reviewed by the International Business Times, Arkema, who owns the chemical plant that was reported to have witnessed two separate explosions, uh, chemical explosions, uh, have previously and successfully lobbied against rules that were meant to make plants like theirs a little safer. Now, these rules, which were set to go into effect uh, this year, were actually halted by the Trump administration after a furious lobbying campaign by plant owner Arkema and its affiliated trade association, the American Chemistry Council. Now, that council, of course, represents a chemical industry that has ended up pouring in millions of dollars into our federal elections and into, of course, Republican politicians in Texas. Now, the effort to stop the chemical plant safety rules was actually also backed by Texas lawmakers thanks to that lobby, right? They received gigantic camp, uh, campaign donations from these chemical industry donors. Now, Sirota, he goes into the history of why these rules were drafted in the first place. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, back in 2013, there was a, another uh, explosion at a, at, at a chemical plant that ended up killing 15 people. Now, that explosion had ended up being deliberate, but we didn't know that in the first place. Now, that prompted the Obama administration to try to look at the safety standards at these plants and, you know, see what they could do to raise those safety standards. All right. Now, in an executive order that year, President Obama proposed an overhaul of the Environmental Protection Agency's risk management program. Now, the goal of that was to increase safety and transparency at chemical plants by strengthening regulations, which are basically just rules, okay? Now, the EPA said that the enhanced rules would seek to improve chemical process safety, assist local emergency authorities in planning for and responding to accidents, and improve public awareness of chemical hazards at a regulated source. Now, that's, a, that's very interesting here. Public awareness of chemical hazards. Well, right now, what's going on in Texas in these flooded areas in the Arkema plant is that you have these chemicals that are now getting into the water supply. Well, not water supply, but into the floodwaters. Not only that, but there are, of course, fires, explosions due to these chemicals since uh, the flood area. Um, okay, so this plant gets flooded and the generators which are supposed to keep these chemicals cool, well, they no longer work. If the chemicals aren't cool, they start to heat up and then they explode. And then chemicals get everywhere. Not a good situation, right? Now, Arkema has six production plants in Texas and has received more than $8.7 million worth of taxpayer subsidies from the state. Arkema's Crosby plant, which OSHA fined more than $90,000 for 10 serious violations earlier this year, and has spewed smoke in Crosby, appears to be covered under the existing EPA rules because of the kinds of chemicals that it uses. Now, Texas Republican uh, Governor Greta Abbott has given chemical companies legal cover to hide the locations of their EPA-regulated chemicals. The Associated Press reports that the imperiled Arkema facility houses large amounts of toxic sulfur dioxide and flammable methylpropan, which required Arkema to submit a risk management plan to the agency and which would have subjected the company to the strength and safety rules. So that's how it relates here, right? Well, unfortunately, thanks to the Trump administration, those rules were blocked. Now, Trump puts in Scott Pruitt to the EPA as a climate denier and somebody who hates the whole mission of the EPA to protect the environment. It's like, I don't care about the environment. I care about industry profits. So yes, I'm going to block that. Uh, and so these rules, which would have taken uh, uh, effect on March 14th, were no longer, were not put into place. Now, it's important to note that those Republican uh, uh, congressmen who helped block the rule, they received a lot of money from the industry. Now, uh, one of them is Senator John Cornyn. You also have Representative Joe Barton, Representative Pete Olson, Representative Gene Green, Representative Pete Sessions, and Representative Kevin Brady. Now... 
So they received a lot of money. But the money doesn't stop here. The money trail continues. In a letter to the EPA, Arkema noted that, it's member, that it is a member of the American Chemistry Council, a powerful lobbying group that has delivered $1.6 million in campaign donations to federal lawmakers since 2010. The Arkema Bat Group helped spearhead the effort to block the EPA's chemical plant safety rule. In January, the council was one of 21 groups that sent a letter to congressional leaders asserting that the new rule's costs were not worth the alleged safety benefits. Well, looking at the situation that we have now, maybe, maybe it actually was worth it. Uh, now, the American Chemistry Council also lauded Texas Republican Attorney uh, General Ken Paxton. Now, Paxton had co-authored a letter, uh, a letter uh, going after that chemical safety plant, uh, plant safety rule. The letter also chastised the EPA for proposing to require chemical plants to more expansively disclose catastrophic releases of hazardous chemicals and went after regulators for requiring independent audits of facility safety practices. So, and look, there's a chance that had they been able to look into those safety practices and inspect them and do all the things that they're supposed to do, it's possible that some of these chemical explosions might not have happened. Moving a generator to a higher place where people can reach it, they can refuel it, and that it doesn't get destroyed by water damage might have saved these chemical uh, explosions from happening, which probably would have saved the company money overall. Interestingly enough, so it would have helped the environment as well as the uh, company itself which of course suffered a lot of damage as well, thanks to Harvey. Now, not only that, but again, like I said, that plant, thanks to those explosions, they're releasing chemicals into the floodwaters. And they also, thanks to this rule not going into effect, they really don't have to disclose what chemicals are actually there. And that's thanks to Republicans blocking these rules and regulations. Now, of these Republicans, they were very, very well paid. Now, Paxton, for example, had received $106,000 from the chemical industry donors during his 2014 run for attorney general. His letter was also backed by Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt and then, a term, uh, then Alabama Attorney General Luther Strange, who's now a senator. Now, they argued that disclosing details of chemical accidents would imperil national security. That's very interesting. Oh, we, we're a private corporation, uh, but we cannot disclose our chemicals because of national security. No. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, they further go on to say that the push to persuade the Trump administration to block the rule was also bolstered by the American Chemistry Council backed resolution introduced on February 1st by Rep uh, Representative Mark Wayne Mullen of Oklahoma. In fact, among the 65 co-sponsors of the measure to block the rules were 10 members of the Texas congressional delegation, including five of them who represent the Houston area districts. That is uh, Brian Babin, uh, Babin sorry, uh, whose district encompasses Crosby, where the Arkema plant is, Michael McCall, chairman of the House Committee on Homeland Security, whose district sits northwest of Houston, John Culberson, whose district covers parts of Houston, uh, Randy Weber, who represents a coastal district just outside of Houston, and Blank Fahrenthold, a representative whose coastal district lies southwest of Houston. Other co-sponsors include our favorite uh, Texas Senator, Louis Gohmert, and of course, Lamar Smith. Now, uh, going back to that committee, uh, you have Weber and, and, and Babin also being parts of that, uh, a part of that committee. Now, uh, not only that, as I said, you got to follow the money here. The Texas lawmakers who sponsored Mullen's bill to block the chemical plant safety regulations ended up receiving more than $652,000 from the chemical industry, according to the Center for Responsive Politics. Hmm. Federal contribution data also shows the American Chemistry Council specifically has delivered more than $160,000 to the entire Texas congressional de delegation since 2008, with top recipients being... Gene Green, uh, Olson, McCall, who also co-sponsored the Mullen bill, and Barton, Babin, and Weather, uh, Weber, who also co-sponsored the bill. They had all received uh, various amounts of money, uh, ranging from $3,000 to over $20,000. Uh, 
Not only that, but this year, Texas Senators Ted Cruz and John Cornyn were two of 16 co-sponsors of a companion resolution in the Senate. Cornyn has taken more than $408,000 from the chemical industry over the course of his career. Uh, Cruz has received $234,000 from the industry. The National uh, Institute on Money and po State Politics reports that the American Chemistry Council has given more to federal lawmakers in Texas than legislatures, legislators in any other state. So, again, follow the money. There is so much money coming from the chemical industry in order to block common sense rules and regulations. Oh, no, no, they're going to cost too much. Well, no, if a disaster comes in and, you know, a, a Harvey-type disaster, which, again, I guess seems pretty rare, uh, but might actually not be so rare anymore uh, into the future. But you want to make sure that your company, that you protect your assets. And not just protect your ass, but your assets, right? By making sure that you try to uh, make sure that your building uh, does certain things to make sure that chemicals don't end up spilling all over the place or exploding. Fairly simple, okay? Now, uh, you also have more money uh, uh, from ExxonMobil, Dow Chemical, Coke Industries, and Saudi Basic Industries Corporation, which is a Saudi-owned government firm with multiple locations in the Houston area, the old lobbying on the legislation, which, of course, set the stage for the Trump administration to block these rules. And so that's where it comes from. So look, you can see part of what's going on in Houston and in the aftermath with the chemicals and the fires, it's kind of partly due to lack of regulations on chemical plants. Now, some of you might disagree with that, right? You might think that, come on, dude, that's unfair. You didn't know that this was going to happen. How could you prepare for it? How could you expect the companies to prepare for something that you didn't even know what was going to happen? Well, it's called being smart. You should prepare for the worst. And not only that, but look, how do, like, when somebody claims that, well, we didn't know there, there was going to be a hurricane in Texas. It was going to be that big, that powerful. Climate scientists have been warning you for decades that there are going to be increased storms that are going to be stronger and that are going to do more damage. Not only that, but Houston sits on a floodplain. Put two and two together, guys. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Think about it, okay? You must prepare. If you're a company, you have to prepare for the worst. And when, when you have scientists out there telling you that it's going to get worse, you should maybe take them more seriously. Insurance companies already are. The U.S. military, the Pentagon, is already also preparing for the worst when it comes to climate change. And yet we have these corporations in Texas that are lobbying to save you know, themselves a buck. Uh, and they're lobbying these politicians who don't believe in climate change. This is a problem. Huge, huge problem, okay? And not only that, but look, this company broke all these rules, right? OSHA rules, $90,000. And then they used their, a lot of their money to lobby to stop regulations. And what they could have done instead is use that money to make their plants a little bit safer. So, but look, they didn't do that. And unfortunately, now we have the situation that we have, Okay. And look, these politicians also share a lot of uh, culpability in this. Look, they could have worked to combat climate change. And instead, they took the money. And they continue to this day to deny this. And they don't want to take responsibility for their part in what is turning into a humanitarian and ecological disaster. Not to say they're fully to blame, but there are actions that do have consequences. And unfortunately, those consequences will be felt, likely felt, along with the rest of what's destroyed in the storm for years to come. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.